The problem reads, the maximum power output capability of an internal combustion engine decreases with altitude, sea level, because the air density and hence the mass flow rate of fuel and air decrease. A truck leaves Denver, elevation 5,280 feet. Denver temperature and barometric pressure are 80 degrees Fahrenheit and 24.8 inches of mercury, respectively. It travels through Vail Pass, which is at an elevation of 10,600 feet. The temperature decreases at the rate of 3 degrees Fahrenheit per, per 1,000 feet of elevation change. Determine the temperature and barometric pressure at Vail Pass and the percent decrease in maximum power available compared to that at Denver. Now, I sourced this problem at this URL. I believe it is based on a problem from Fox. What do we need to determine? We need to determine the temperature and the barometric pressure at Vail Pass and also the percent decrease in maximum power available in Vail compared to that at Denver. And how would we do this percent decrease in maximum power? Well, the maximum power output capability decreases with altitude because the air density decreases. So we're going to use the fact that the percent decrease in maximum power is the percent decrease in air density. And so we need the temperature and the barometric pressure at Vail Pass and the air density both in Denver, it's not given, and at Vail Pass in order to calculate the percent decrease. So what are our steps? Well, our first step is to write down everything we know, and we're also going to do a unit change to standard units. Now, this is important, not so much because of the values. We can use our calculator to do the values. That is, we can figure out 80 degrees Fahrenheit, what it is in centigrade, 24.8 inches of mercury in millimeters mercury, and the same thing with the elevations. Let's look at this rate here. Three degrees Fahrenheit rate of change. So this is a difference of three degrees Fahrenheit. So we need to know what a difference of three degrees Fahrenheit means in Celsius or Kelvin. The second step is to determine the appropriate differential equations. We're going to look at the conditions of the problem and what equations are needed. We need to know what variables to use. And here, as always, we need to know what variables depend on the change in height Z. Remember that every time we have something to do with altitude and change in height, we need to look at the appropriate differential equation. We can see here that temperature depends on height. So we need to know how to use that. That's actually the first time we will do that. So determine how to use the rate of temperature decrease in this differential equation. And then of course we need to solve the differential equation. And in the end, we need to calculate the things we need. Temperature, barometric pressure, and percent decrease in maximum power, that is air density, and then this. So those are our steps. You can go, Click on the link to get exactly to those parts. Okay, we're ready to start. As always, we start by writing down what we have, and then we said we're going to do a unit change to standard units, and that we need to be particularly careful of the temperature decrease. Okay, we have two states. This first state is Denver, and the second state is Vail. So let's write that down. Our states are Denver and Vail. In Denver, what we know the elevation, that is Z1, is equal to 5,280. And we know the elevation in Vail is 10,600 feet. We know that the temperature in Denver, T1, is 80 degrees Fahrenheit. We don't know the temperature in Vail, we're looking for that. And we know that the pressure in Denver is 24 0.8 inches mercury. We don't know the pressure in Vail. Yeah, we're looking for that. Also, we're given that the temperature decreases at a rate of 3 degrees Fahrenheit per 1,000 feet of elevation. What does that mean? First of all, that means that the temperature is a function of elevation. So T is a function of Z. We'll need that later. Also, it is a linear rate of change. Every 1,000 feet, 3 degrees Fahrenheit decrease. So this is a linear rate of change. It's a line. That means that the rate equals the slope of the line. What is the rate? 
It is the change in temperature over the change in height and altitude. And we're given that it's three degrees Fahrenheit over 1,000 feet. The important part is this is a temperature. This is not a temperature. This is not a temperature. It's a change in temperature. So we need to know how to convert a degree of Fahrenheit to a degree of Celsius or a degree of Kelvin. We'll see how to do that in a moment. Let's show how to do these with our calculator. So here we're working with a TI-86. You can use any converter you know. On the TI-86, second converter gives us all these types of conversion. So the first thing we're looking for is length. And we want 5,280 feet going to meters. And we hit enter, and that's 1,609.3. Do the other one. So 3,230.9. Temperature. We hit exit to get back to the level before that. 80 degrees, 80. Then we say that we want temperature. We want it to go, let's say that we want first, so Fahrenheit is F2, and then to Celsius, F1. Enter, that gives us 26.7, 26.7 degrees Celsius, and let's immediately write that in Kelvin. You can, we can either add just by pressing plus and 273.15, or we could have done the conversion. So this is 299.8. Now we have 24.8 inches mercury. We want it to be in millimeters mercury or in pascals. So let's first change it to millimeters mercury. So that would mean inches to millimeters. So we do exit. We want 24.8 and we need length and we want inches to millimeters. So that's 629.9. 629.9 millimeters Hg. And then just in case we need that in Pascals, remember that we multiply by 10 to the fifth, so 1 EE5, and divide by 760. So 82,884 Pascals. 82,884 Pascals. Okay, now we're to the part that requires that we think a little bit. Now, both the numerator and the denominator are deltas, but feet and meters have the same zero point, so we can just use a conversion on the feet. The problem with Fahrenheit and Celsius is they don't have the same zero point. So let's do the feet conversion with our calculator. So we need 1,000, and we need it from feet to meters. And so that's 304.8, 304.8 meters. Now, in order to convert this change in temperature of 3 degrees Fahrenheit to centigrade or Kelvin, because they are the same when we're working with changes, we have to remember either the conversion factor or find another way to do it. The conversion factor for degrees Fahrenheit is 5 ninths degree centigrade which is the same thing as 5 ninths Kelvin. So we get our calculator. 3 times 5 divided by 9 equals 1.7, and we'll just write Kelvin. 1.7 Kelvin. And so then we would divide these to get a factor. So 1.7 divided by 304, so we just do divided by 304.8, and that gives us 0 0.00547 equals 0 0.00547 Kelvin verse meters. Now, actually this is a decrease. 
So we need actually to have a minus here everywhere. Minus, minus, and minus. So the slope is a negative value. The temperature is decreasing at 0 0.00547 Kelvin per meter. Now, just in case you forget this conversion factor here, you can always calculate delta T by finding a couple of temperatures that differ by minus 3. So let's say 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and what would we do? Minus 53 degrees Fahrenheit, and then we can just do a simple conversion on these, and that would work too. So 50, and now we need to back up to temperature. Temperature, degrees Fahrenheit to Kelvin, minus 53 Fahrenheit to Kelvin, and enter, and we get the same one, minus 1.7 Kelvin. So, if you forget this conversion factor, just make up a couple of numbers that give you, that give you that change in temperature. So, what do we have all together? We have 1609 meters, 3230.9 meters, 299.8 Kelvin, 82,884 Pascals, and our rate of change is this.